In this episode of the Online Classroom, we're going to look at the system design specification topic. And as part of that, we're going to do our attributes cascade on a systems approach to a straightforward problem, keeping a lawn neat. The attributes cascade relates your customer requirements to your subsystems and system interface. This is a really important part of the process because it begins to connect what your customer is after to your system design. So remember the customer requirements from the customer requirements online lecture. Here we developed four customer requirements, the four most important ones, and we put design requirements against each of these customer requirements. For the purposes of the attributes cascade, we're just going to look at the first customer requirement because otherwise we'll end up with quite a few pages worth of uh, attributes. For each of the design requirements, we're going to break them down into secondary and tertiary attributes. Here we see the first two, effective cutting mechanism and catches grass appropriately. The primary attributes are taken directly from the design requirements and as we're looking for attributes, some of the language might need to be changed slightly. To establish the secondary attribute, ask how you are going to achieve the primary attribute. So to achieve effective cutting mechanism, two attributes apply to that. We're going to make it uh, fast spinning and it's going to have a sharp blade. Likewise, for catches grass appropriately, it's going to have a large catching area and a removable catcher. When you go through your attributes cascade, you might have more secondary attributes to describe how you're going to achieve the primary attribute. If we then have a look at the tertiary attribute, we ask how again. So how are we going to achieve fast spinning? There's going to be an adjustable speed, uh, adequate maximum speed, so it's going to be fast enough to cut grass. And we're going to have a responsive speed. So perhaps if we're cutting thick grass, we want it to speed up a little bit. You continue this for all of the tertiary attributes. So here we have a completed list of all of the tertiary attributes. And the next step is to look at how these tertiary attributes relate to your system interface. So if we remember our system interface from the system interface online classroom, we have the cutting system, the power system, the control system, the locomotion system, the chassis, and the safety subsystems. So these are all of the subsystems within our lawn cutting system, and what we want to do is relate each of these tertiary attributes to one of the subsystems. For example, the adjustable speed tertiary attribute is probably going to have some relationship to the cutting subsystem, the control subsystem, and the power subsystem. Adequate maximum speed is also going to have a relationship to the cutting, control, and power subsystems, but it's probably also going to have some connection to the safety subsystem. If we change our maximum speed, it's probably going to affect how safe our system is. The same relationships happen with the responsive speed subsystems. And you'll find that when you go through the tertiary attributes, as you try and connect to a customer requirement, it's likely that the subsystems are going to be affected, are going to be very similar. For the sharp blade, self-sharpening and replaceable were our tertiary attributes, and that only relates to the cutting subsystem. This is dependent on the design. For example, I could have a design where the chassis provides the self-sharpening system, and that would mean that the cutting and chassis subsystems would affect this attribute. But the way I've thought about the design, it's going to be just the cutting subsystem. The catching grass appropriately attribute largely relates to the cutting and chassis, to get this large cutting area and then just the chassis and perhaps the locomotion where it comes to the easy to maneuver uh, perhaps there's a need to make sure that you can still move the lawnmower and remove the catcher quite easily so this gives us our completed attributes cascade and allows us to trace the customer requirements to the primary subsystems if you change the requirements then you can trace it to the subsystems it will affect so for example if cuts grass no longer becomes a priority then we know which subsystems it's going to affect. If catches grass appropriately becomes something that's not quite important, then we know that that's largely going to affect the chassis subsystems and it's going to have minor effects on the cutting and locomotion subsystems. If you make changes to your subsystems, so let's say we're going to make the power subsystem provide much, much more speed than is necessary, we know that that's going to affect the uh, customer requirement of cuts grass and through the the tertiary, secondary, and primary attributes. As the cascade is completed, you can begin to see which subsystems are more important than others. 
This might begin to demonstrate which subsystems need to have built-in redundancies. So for example, if my effective cutting mechanism breaks and it's the most important requirement, these are some of the things that I might need to consider when designing my system. So perhaps I need to make my sharp blade attribute also be really quick to replace, or perhaps that will be covered by a different customer requirement. It will also show which subsystems are so strongly connected that perhaps they might need to be combined in the system design. For example, if we're looking at the first lot of tertiary attributes, it's pretty clear that there's a relationship between the cutting, control and power subsystems that might need to be defined more clearly or could be combined into a say single drivetrain subsystem. A recap of the key ideas from the Attributes Cascade Online Classroom. The Attributes Cascade connects the customer requirements to your system design. So the intention behind all of the design decisions that have been made can be related to the customer requirements. You can also begin to start an analysis of your design by looking at the changes and knock-on factors that can be traced between the customer requirements and the system attributes and then understood to help provide a better design. Make sure to check out the self-test for this topic and the reading which is available on Model, and we'll see you next time.